Hello traders and happy Sunday to you. It is officially October and with that I figured it would be appropriate to go ahead and update you guys on my trading situation. I show this every week as an effort to stay transparent in the industry and uh, it's trying me this month because last month was not so good. In fact, it was my worst performing month of the year so far. I had a 3.11% drawdown on my account uh, and that is following another losing month before that. So uh, I like to talk about this because again, I think new traders uh, really benefit, I, I, I think, uh, from hearing about traders who have been doing it for a very long time. I've been doing this for years and years now. Um, a little bit of the, the inside scoop on this stuff. So I had a really good trading stretch and unfortunately, August and September were just not nearly as good months. So <clears throat> I've been making this point very frequently, so I'm sorry if you hear me say this again. I didn't. I don't think that I did anything tremendously wrong during these times. I stuck to the same strategy and same rule set that I traded during all of these months. It's just the reality of trading is that there is some variance in the markets. Sometimes things work, sometimes, sometimes things don't work. For example, if a market is a trending market and you have a trending strategy, it's gonna be very easy to make good money. But if the market starts to go choppy and you're still trying to trade a trend strategy, it can be a very big, uh, a very tough thing, but inevitably it's going to happen at times. So anyways, that is my current standing. We are, uh, we've got a gray uh, tag here as the, the markets have not opened yet for October, but it is October 1st. So let's jump into October with some trade setups and ideas. Let's take a look. Okay, so <clears throat> here's what we've got to look at first. The first thing I want to look at is the dollar still strong going into October? And I think a lot of traders are probably wondering this because the dollar has been so strong for so long. Let's talk a little bit about that. It's because if we take a look at the daily chart, look at this. Daily chart was monstrous in 2022. It has been not so hot for 2023 until recently where we started to see the re uh, lighting of the fires for the dollar bulls. <clears throat> now, why is this? Well. We could get into a bunch of fundamentals, which we probably will discuss, but let's keep it simple first and just talk technicals. In terms of what we see happening on the chart, we had a huge level of past resistance that broke out and actually even retested that general area before pushing higher. So you can actually see, right, we had this major level, that 104.5 area. We talked about this over and over on stream as a major level of resistance. And upon that breakout, right, these candles showed that dollar bulls were serious and they were back. So where does that bring us to today? Is this overextended? Should we be shorting the dollar? Should we be looking for the, the pullback buy? What's the idea? Well, in my opinion, we drop it down to the four hour chart. I'm still bullish on the dollar at this time. In fact, unless you're you know a daily chart trader, like a day chart, uh, 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 you trade like longer term charts using the daily. Uh, for me, I think that there's still plenty of opportunities to be a bull in the dollar market. now. I mentioned some of those fundamental factors for a second, and I do want to mention them, but I want to show you something else that's important. The Edge Finder, which if you're a regular viewer, you know what this is, and if you're a newer viewer, the Edge Finder is an algorithm that uh, myself and my company, we, are, we build software tools for traders, A1 Trading. <clears throat> we uh, have been working on this system, which pulls in a ton of data lots of economic figures, the commitment of traders data, retail sentiment, and it ranks and scores all of the data to help generate powerful trading setups. This is the training that I have done. Now again, you might be memeing on me, you might say, Nick, you haven't had good months recently, so maybe we shouldn't pay attention to your algorithm. Well, <laughs> you could, that would, if you were only to look at these two months, I guess you could totally meme on me for that. But the overall uh, has been very profitable. And this is a system that I've been trading for quite some time. What I use is I use the edge finder to help me find general economic uh, biases, right? I want to look at the macro. I want to look at the, the commitment of traders and retail and see what everybody is kind of positioned in. And then I want to look at economic figures and see what trends likely are to form there and then generate trading setups from that. So like last week, I was bullish oil and I actually had a recovery trade, still had a negative month, but I came back quite a bit with a single oil trade, which was awesome. Anyways, um, let's keep going. I want to talk about this dollar concept. So if we scroll down here, you'll notice that pound dollar and euro dollar. These two things have been very bearish. Same with the gold market as well. The Australian dollar still bearish. And the reason I'm pointing this out is that 
This is selling something against the US dollar is the bias. And then on the top side, we have dollar Swiss and dollar yen, both bullish. So clearly the edge finder has been very bullish on the dollar. And until that changes, I'm looking to continue to be a part of that trade. So in terms of DXY, when we take a look at the four hour chart, is this thing kind of cracked and falling apart? Well, possibly on the shorter time frame, right? We have uh, seen a little bit of a, a falling out of this more recent four hour chart trend, but the overall four hour chart still looks intact. However, we probably <clears throat> gotta see some interesting stuff happen here before I'm looking to get bullish again. So I'll show you this, right? We had this bounce off of support. This is pretty big. I would say that that's actually a nice, uh, a nice level of support that was found, right? You can see we had a nice ugly, <laughs> engulfing candle uh, to follow this zone being hit. So for me, I would say that, you know, maybe the dollar has found a little bit of a push here and we can start to begin looking at bullish setups again on the, uh, you know, the Euro dollar, for example, if we pull that up, we'll take a look at Euro. So Euro, you can already see, I've got my chart marked up. The 50% ticked up, right? And immediately saw some rejection. That could continue going into this week. But if it does retrace bigger, I actually even think I like this trading setup more. Perhaps looking at the 61.8% retracement as a sell zone to consider, right? So I'm looking at this. I like the idea of putting my stops just above uh, structure highs, right? <clears throat> so leaving a little bit of room there. That's about a 43 pip stop loss, which is not massive, especially if you think about the reward here being uh, well over 100 100 plus pips, 152. So I do like this idea. And that's, and that's of course, just the idea of if it were to come up here and return to the lows, that's about a 150 pip move, uh, which I think could, could very well happen. Again, the European area had lower than expected inflation figures, which is pretty much showing some uh, signs of cool down in the European area. Whereas the US has seen relatively higher inflation and a central bank that stays very hawkish. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means they are um, concerned. They, they need to see uh, something change so that this inflation stuff stops being such a big problem. And so in order to do that, they're gonna probably keep re interest rates very high. Interest rates being higher causes some fear, which is bullish for the dollar. It's also um, simply that, you know, it will make the dollar more in demand from foreign investment as uh, basically interest backed, uh, interest rate uh, derived products will become more attractive. Anyway, like bonds and mortgages and things like that. Um, as, a, as a lender, it's becoming more attractive. Anyways, that's deep down the rabbit hole. The main point is right now, the Fed looks very hawkish, which is bullish for the dollar. And so I'm generally looking for pullback opportunities on things like the pound USD. And we could also extend it over to the pound. I'm sorry, the Euro USD. We could also expend extend it over to the pound uh, and see what we can do here. So the pound has been a little trickier because there hasn't been very good like pullback breakouts, pullback breakouts. It's been like a straight shot to the downside. And fundamentally, this really actually makes a lot of sense. The Bank of England, being one of the more dovish sounding central banks right now, has people selling the pound very quickly. And so comparing that to the dollar, which is the opposite effect, you know, a very uh, defensive and uh, hawkish central bank here in the US, uh, it does pose for a very stark difference and that can create some strong trends. One thing many traders will do is they'll ignore fundamentals because they are too complicated, they're too difficult, whatever. But here's the thing, if you understand fundamentals and you understand the story that's playing out, you can find trends like these and take part of them sooner. That is why fundamentals are so powerful. And it's another reason why most retail traders who unfortunately retail traders tend to lose money, they hardly pay attention to fundamentals whatsoever. Most retail traders are solely technical traders. Not to say that there's anything wrong with that, but you gotta think if professional traders, most of them use macro drivers, macro fundamentals to help guide their trading decisions, maybe there's a reason. Anyways, the pound USD pulling back here, uh, I, I guess you do, you could kind of get fancy with it and say maybe there's a little bit of uh, resistance here at this broken level of support, right? Big push underneath that level. So as we retrace, 
it could be interesting to see if this one wants to continue. Of the two, I'm going to say I probably favor uh, the euro on this front. Indices had a really bad week last week. Uh, again, continuing their, their downward sloop. Uh, we broke out of a key level of support off of the daily chart. If you're looking at the S&P 500, I made it clear that unfortunately, I think the S&P probably stays bearish for a little while and probably could even see 4160 in the coming weeks. Now, I should be a little bit hesitant on that because we do have something that's changed for the indices that I'd like to show you guys. If we go take a look at seasonality, this might be interesting to us. Uh, we are coming into October, which by the way, while we're on the Euro, uh, the Euro is expected to be slightly negative during the month of October, as seen in the data here. Now, if we, and this is the last 10 year average, by the way, if we switch it over to the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is actually expected to start going up, at least on a 10 year average basis. This fourth quarter is notoriously a good time for stocks because, in large part, uh, there's a little bit of uh, sort of end of year shopping sprees that go on in the United States. We're a consumer economy. Um, most of the Western world is, but the U.S. is definitely uh, top dog in terms of consumerism. Anyways, that massive flow of consumerism, I don't even know if that's a word, it definitely drives stocks to sell or companies to sell a quite a lot of product, especially retail facing products like, um, you know, gaming computers and e-commerce business like Amazon are going to do great. And, um, you know, makeup companies and uh, clothing outlets and all these sorts of things are going to do very well during this time, most likely. At least most retail consumer uh, consumer facing um, companies tend to actually do most of their revenue or a huge chunk of their revenue in the last three months of the year. So that is part of the reason why I am hesitant on, I'm definitely not shorting the S&P 500. I'm definitely not shorting. I don't like to short indices in general. I find them to be that to be a very difficult trade to pull off. However, I am going to probably be very cautious as I do think it is possible we still extend that leg down perhaps before we make that kind of grand move back uh, in the north direction. We'll see. But anyways, that's my take on the S&P 500. I know a lot of traders who watch my videos have slowly moved over to indices with me. I have traded indices for years, but I returned to them heavily in 2023 as uh, you know the market shifted back into more of a bullish environment. Not so much in the last few weeks, though. Let's take a quick look again at the top setups. Remember the S&P 500, as I mentioned it earlier, we had the dollar stuff. Well, the S&P is down here on the bearish side. Same with the Dow, same with the NASDAQ. So the algorithm is kind of pointing towards some pessimism on that front. So let's be careful with the indices, I would say. Uh, and again, yen cross is also very bullish. I think this is also very interesting. Seasonality is suggesting that um, <clears throat> perhaps some of the yen crosses uh, will be a little bit more bullish during these coming months. I think it is a good time to talk about seasonality with October upon us. Let's talk now about gold. We'll take a look at gold and talk all about this one because this is all the rave right now. Gold has just tanked. Um, I always make the cheesy joke on my channel that gold has melted whenever it comes down because, of course, it's metal and it can be smelted down. Uh, that's a really lame dad joke. But <clears throat> hey, if you do this stuff like I do for, for years and years on end, you got to find some way to entertain yourself. It is, uh, well, I'm just kidding. The markets honestly are fascinating to me. <clears throat> it's one of my two favorite topics to uh, kind of learn and discuss about. The other one being, uh, so, so economics or, or markets slash uh, the other one is uh, history. I'm a history nerd as well. Anyways, uh, let's keep going. I want to talk about this gold move. So gold broke underneath. Big time, really, really impressive sell off. I mean, this kind of move is rare in the markets. And I gotta say, I gotta pat my friend on the back, Frank, who is inside of our Discord community. Let me see if I can show you something. All right, guys, sorry for the uh, random pick back up. The video uh, had to get cut off, I had something come up, but I am back. And honestly, I can't really remember exactly where I was with everything. I think I was going through the watch list. I think I was talking a little bit about uh, just what I've been paying attention to on the Edge Finder. I did want to direct our attention to the smart money tracker. The COT data this week actually had some very interesting stuff to say. Um, remember how I mentioned that the S&P 500 is expected to actually do well in the end of the year? Well, look at this. Take a look at what we saw on the increased buying side of things. The S&P 500 had a pretty bullish bid. 
Now, what about the dollar? The dollar actually had a very mild, very slight uh, decrease in net positioning, meaning some short uh, bias came in on the U.S. dollar in the last week, which I think is very interesting to see playing out. On the other side, you have things like the NZD, the CAD, the AUD, these things getting pretty much bought. And then on the other side, you have some interesting stuff. Look at the pound. The pound was really bearish this past week. Gold also very bearish. And I think when we go back to the gold chart, which is where we left off, this is a confirmation for me to stay bearish for the time being on the metals, right? Minus 3.56% in net positions chains. If you don't know what that means, the COT data here on the, the edge finder allows us to look at long contracts, short contracts, and the change in them week to week. We've just summed everything up to make it easy with this final column over here, the net change column, which gives us an insight as to what big money was doing. Check this out. Big decrease overall to the downside for gold. And that, on top of a major price action sell-off, tells me that price retracements this week, in my opinion, this is probably one of the more obvious zone-to-zone -zone trades that I see right now in the markets. So I am still bearish on gold, and um, we will see how this one wants to play out. Again, if it does catch a little bit of a bounce, there may be an opportunity to sell this. I'm not necessarily, in my opinion, there's nothing to do. I can't buy it down here, right? Because it could just go right down to that zone without any pullback. I'm just saying that if it does pull back, I like that 38.2 as a possible continuation zone for um, you know everything that we're seeing. The US dollar is very strong for a good fundamental reason. The commitment of traders data shows us that big money is short. And of course, our algorithm overall is giving, a, giving it a minus four bearish reading. Uh, it's not the most bearish thing, but the price action is very strong and I really like the way it's looking. I did a whole video yesterday on oil. If you'd like to go watch that, you can do that just by going to my videos and watching yesterday's upload where I talked about oil, where I'm at and what I may be doing next with that. So I don't wanna restate uh, all the same stuff there. Dollar yen is a very bullish. Now I've mentioned this, careful with dollar yen guys, cause one thing to note, 150, 150, that, that exchange rate, has been very clearly illustrated by uh, the Japanese central bank. They don't like the exchange this high. And these are the points where we've seen in the past currency intervention from the Bank of Japan. So is that possibly going to recur, uh, occur again? Maybe, maybe not. However, there is one thing I would say. If the dollar yen breaks this high, it is likely that we continue to see flow in the upwards direction. We have rising yields here in the United States, which puts upward pressure on this pair. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that the US two year moves very similarly to the dollar yen. Same with the 10 year, right? The 10 year, maybe even more so. The 10 year and the two year, all of these, uh, you know, the bond yields world are flying high. That is one of the drivers to the dollar bullish case right now. If you are trying to be a fundamentalist and you don't already look at yields, Really, I highly suggest you start looking into them. However, I will say something about the dollar. Look at this, this is a weekly chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 green weeks in a row. Is it due for a pullback? Probably. If it pulls back, is it gonna just crash back to the lows? In my opinion, probably not. But from just a higher time frame perspective for a moment, guys, there's possibly room for price to come down to this 104.5 level that we did mention for maybe that longer term continuation up. It does seem like higher interest rates for longer from the Fed's own uh, kind of iteration, it seems to be the case. It seems like to be the, the base case right now, which is what is creeping out some of the markets. It's why gold sold off. It's why silver sold off. It's why the NASDAQ, S&P and Dow sold off. The Fed is staying strong on their fight against inflation. And that, uh, coupled with you know a relatively stable and strong economy out of the United States compared to other places, has the dollar looking very strong. Why? Why does the economy matter? Uh, why, why does that matter to the dollar? Well, a strong economy uh, bolsters the US dollar because it means that the Fed may be less likely to need to rate cut in the instance of you know economic peril or recession. A strong economy reduces the chance of recession anytime soon, but there's still that chance that is still on the horizon and will be interesting to see uh, if that does come into play. I do wanna mention guys, if you guys would like access to the Edge Finder, it is available currently for a discounted rate 
There is a link in the description down below. If you click that link to get access to the Edge Finder, you'll see that there's some promo codes down there. You can get a copy for a lower price. Um, this is sort of what I've been doing at the end of my videos. If you make it to the end of my videos, I just wanna say I do really sincerely appreciate your viewership and your dedication to this stuff. I know how hard trading is. Obviously, I've been doing it for a number of years. And if you would like a copy of our tools, we're helping traders out by giving discounted copies. If you use the promo code down below in the description, YTVIP, or you message us on our website using the message link down below in the description, you can chat with us or get a copy for yourself. If you think it would be helpful to you, I can highly, highly recommend it. Obviously, we've built it, we've sold it. So take it with a grain of salt, but genuinely we have had so many traders who have been very positively impacted by involving the fundamentals into their trading by using the edge finder, which reduces the workload dramatically. Check it out down below in the description. See if it's a fit for you. Have a chat with us if you'd like to about the tool, if you have any questions, and I hope we can get you a copy. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful week ahead.